One of the first things you learn with CML is how to build a lab topology and start it. It's relatively straightforward. The other skill you need, though, is to learn how to monitor performance for CPU and RAM usage so you can answer that question that everybody's wondering about. Do I have enough CPU and RAM to run CML on my computer without spending any money on an upgrade? In this video, we'll do both of those. So the outline for this video is pretty straightforward. I'll talk to you about how to build a lab from the user interface of CML, and then we'll do it. And I'll show you the steps to get a two router, two switch lab working. Then we'll go back to talking about things and I'll talk about what to expect for CPU and RAM usage of the nodes that are available with CML free edition. And then of course I'll demo that again and show you how the numbers should increase so you can keep an eye on it and answer for yourself. Do I have enough to run CML free? This is the second video in the series that I'm doing in early 2025 on CML Free. Here's the rest of the lineup if you want to hit pause and glance at some of those titles and then look for those in the associated playlist. All right, let's jump in and do it. So you want to use a lab, right? All right, so you got to get the software installed. And I mentioned this in the first video, so just to review, you'll need a Windows or Mac system. If it's Mac, you need an Intel chip, the older models of Mac but you install one of the VMware applications, virtualization apps like Workstation Pro or Fusion Pro. Then you install CML using that tool, and then you start CML, and CML F meaning CML Free Edition, and then familiarize yourself with the user interface. You can use this course mentioned at the bottom of the page even if you wanna dig in with that, or you can just poke around and click things and learn. But I'm gonna demo the core part of that here in the next few moments of how to build a lab, start the lab, and then use it and get to the console and start doing things that are more familiar from your learning for CCNA. Second part of this video, we'll get into experimenting with the performance and looking at that CPU and RAM. So here's what you'll do. You'll connect to the CML user interface and you'll click a button that says add lab and you'll get a page that has this grid shape in the back and that's called a canvas. And then when you click this icon that looks like three circular nodes with links between them, those are, look like a network diagram, if you will. If you tap that or click that, you'll get this window that pops up. And here's where you could say point your mouse pointer at the IOL image and drag it onto the canvas, the IOL L2 image, drag it onto the canvas and so on and build your topology. So let's jump into the demo now and I'll show you exactly how to do that and build a two router, two switch lab. I'm doing this demo from a web browser connected to a CML free VM and I put it in the state as if I had just installed it. I deleted all the labs. So here we are at the dashboard and normally you would see a lot of labs here if you've been working on it, but there are zero listed here because I haven't created any yet. So your normal interaction here would be to say, hey, let's, let's add, a lab, add a lab if you want to do it yourself, or you could import a file, which I'll talk about in the next video. Say if you see a lab somewhere online and you want to follow along and they provide the lab information. All right, but if we click add, we're going to get a canvas. And notice we've got this grid at the top and this bar that I can slide down at the bottom. And this is where we have this canvas to build a topology. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to click on the add node section up here and I see all the ref plats or node types that we have in CML free. It's a limited set of them, but there's our IOL node type and IOL L2, which we'll use here. So very simply, when I click and hold, this window goes away so I can place it wherever I want, click and hold. And as soon as I start to slide, the window goes away. It shows up again and I've got these nodes. Now, if I click in the canvas background, it goes away and now I've got the four nodes. That's great. Another thing that happened that's subtle up here at the top is CML named the lab for me and it just made a really obvious generic name, um, but you can change it. I clicked there and we could say, you know, uh, Wendell's test lab one, something clever like that. I could even put a text description down here if I wanted to keep track of more information. So now we've got Wendell's test lab going here and we've got these nodes and they've got names. The names are default settings. They follow a template, obviously, IOL0, IOL1, IOL L2, 0, and so on. But if I click on the icon and get it to highlight, it might take a couple of clicks, you'll see a node name here. So 
it's good practice to maybe name them something memorable. So I'm going to name them obvious names here. I click on the next one. Get it to highlight. Yes, it takes a few clicks. <laughs> Not sure why, but it does. Give it a name. I'm going to change the switch ones too. And of course, SW2 for this last one. All right, so we've got our devices named. We haven't configured anything yet. We haven't done anything that's familiar to you if all you've learned about is real Cisco devices, right? Like getting into config mode and typing the host name config command and things like that. But we're getting there. So now let's cable up some things. So if I right click, I get a little menu that shows up and one of the options is add link. So you're eventually going to pick interfaces to add your cable to, but if you click add link and you move the mouse pointer, You've got a little cable dangling out here, not to any inter any particular interface yet. It's just kind of dangling there. And you click a second node, and now you've got this pop-up that lets you pick the interface on each device that you want to cable together. Now, if we notice here, all the interfaces on this router are Ethernet interfaces. I'm going to pick Ethernet 02. I'm going to pick an et Ethernet 01 on the right and create the link. Now, let me pause there just a second. They are truly Ethernet interfaces, 10 megabit Ethernet, not 100 meg fast Ethernet or 1,000 meg gigabit or 10, 100, 1,000 interfaces, Ethernet. And so we call them Ethernet. You'll see that in the iOS command set as well. Now I'm going to spread those out a little bit here on the canvas and move things around. Then we'll add a few more cables here just uh, to complete the network. So let me add one from R1 to the switch. We'll use the default interfaces there. And there, and now we've created a small lab network. None of the nodes are running yet. All right, so all we've done is work with the CML controller. We haven't run any operating systems. We're, we're getting ready to, but we're not running any operating systems yet. Now, down at the bottom, you may have noticed these little green bars. Those talk about performance, and we'll talk more about those in the second demo. But if you're keeping an eye on those, notice CPU, we're only using 0.5% of the available CPU and a little less than 10% of the available RAM in the system. And that's going to change once we start some nodes. In fact, why don't we do just that? If you look up here toward the top for this lab, there's a lab menu item, and there's, of course, a start lab option. So if we click to start the lab, you'll see some green starting to show up up here. By the way, there are ways to manipulate what's on the canvas. I just moved things up a little bit and resize this bar because I'm going to do a right click on the R1 node and click console, and the console area shows up down here. Now, there are other ways to reach the console that if you use CML a lot, You'll eventually try out and maybe find more convenient, but the easiest way to get started is to use the console that's built into this user interface. And yes, the router already booted fast enough that by the time I quit talking about it, it's ready and available. It's got all default configuration as per how things are set up in CML, and it's ready for me to get into enable mode and do a config T and get into config mode, so on and so forth, and configure things. Now let's bring our attention back up to the top again. We've still got this lab's canvas visible, the topology we just created. We've got these green circles with check marks saying we've started those nodes. We've got the lab name up near the top. But if we click on dashboard, we get what is a list of labs. And right now it's just one lab, but we see the name of the lab. And we even see the topology mimic. And it's, it's the same topology. If we opened up the canvas again and, you know, put this switch out here and this one over here and go back to the dashboard, notice the topology preview over here changed. So it's changing in real time. All this metadata about things like what nodes you're using and uh, what links you're using and what interfaces is stored in CML for that lab. You can come back later and open up that lab. You'll add more and more labs. You'll see them here. You can suspend or shut down your VM and come back later and bring up those labs and try them out. Let's talk about sizing this CML VM. First off, when you install the VM, you give it some processors and some RAM, and you can change that later when the VM is shut down if you like. 
but the Cisco installation documentation says give it a minimum of eight logical CPUs and eight gig of RAM. Now the doc itself actually says four physical cores, two logical CPUs or virtual CPUs per core, so that's eight logical cores and that's what's configured in your VMware tools here. So that's the recommended minimum and actually I think it's overkill for CML free and I'm gonna show you why here in the next few moments. So the CML free ref flat set is reference platforms, in other words, operating systems. The two main ones you'll use to learn for CCNA are IOL, that's the router operating system. It's running iOS XE and IOL L2, emphasizing layer two switching. That's the switch operating system. Per some Cisco documentation, very brief in the actual CML docs and a few more details mentioned in some webinars, they say they don't even really use a CPU. I mean, they use some processing but it's nowhere close to a full CPU's capacity needed to run these instances of operating systems. But then when you start them and you see what the stats look like in CML, it does say that each instance of these two operating systems consumes a CPU. So think, think of it as between zero and one. And if you want to be safe, think of it as using each of them as using one CPU. All right. They both, the, the documentation and in practice in the software looks like they're using one gig of RAM each. Now that might seem like a lot. It may not seem like a lot, but point is it's manageable. So let's take two scenarios for planning and say you've got five router nodes in a lab. Well, five router nodes at most five CPUs, five gig of RAM. Now, the controller itself has some work to do, so just for planning purposes, assign it one CPU and one gig of RAM. So really, the most you need to run this CML system with a lab with the maximum number of running nodes is a total of six CPUs and six gig of RAM. In fact, I would argue you could go ahead and set up your VM to use only six CPUs and six gig of RAM, and you've probably got a good chance of it working because I've, I've tried it, and it works plenty good here. As another example, same kind of mix, three router nodes, two IOL L2 nodes, it's the same math, right? At most, one CPU for each of the nodes, so three router CPUs, two switch CPUs will give the controller itself a CPU, total of six CPU needed for this particular instance of running things inside CML. Next up, you can reduce your usage of CPU and RAM just by using the unmanaged switch option. It's another operating system, and it's pretty much a do-nothing switch. It uses no CPUs, no RAM. It does not count against your five-node limit on the node count. When do you choose it? Well, if you want all ports in the same VLAN, and you just want all the switch ports to be up and it to do layer two switching. You cannot even configure it. There's no console. There's no way to configure it. So there you go. Just your basic off-the-shelf consumer model switch, basically. Now, when you choose to do that, you, of course, reduce your overhead. For instance, let's just say you had a design with three router nodes, but instead of configurable IOL L2 switches, you chose three unmanaged switch nodes for zero and zero for CPU and RAM. Give the controller a CPU and a gig of RAM. So we only needed four CPUs and four gig of RAM to run in that particular environment. Last up, if you want to put some Linux hosts in your lab design, that's great. There are four options. I think you'll land on the Alpine or desktop Linux option. Why is that? Both already have networking tools like ping and trace route installed. The other two don't. So just for convenience sake, you'll probably land on one of those. I would say if you haven't experienced either, pick one and go for it and try it and see how you like it. Now, all four of the Linux options use one CPU. These two that I think are the two you'll end up with, they use the same amount of RAM, so pick them, use them, and see how you like it. So let me walk you through some of the performance stats so you can keep an eye on things to see if you can run CML free without a hardware update. So the bottom shows you some disk and CPU and RAM performance statistics, and if you click anywhere in there, you get a little more data. And if you click in there again, I'm just gonna click, click again, click, click again. All right, I'm gonna leave it up there now. So let's look on the bottom right. It says VM stats. We see allocated CPUs, allocated memory, running VMs. Those are stats that'll populate once we start some nodes. Up there in that one lab, it's all turned off right now. When I turn them on, we're gonna see 
CPUs, one per node, get allocated. One gig per node allocated per the numbers we just talked about. Over here on the left are the actual used numbers. So CPU load for the last minute, 5 and 15. Memory use last little bit. So I've allocated 8 gig of RAM to this VM. So here we see that it's got 7.75 gig to hand out, and it's not using a lot of it right now. I also, just to make the point, gave this VM only four CPUs. This is well below. It's half of what Cisco rep recommends as a minimum when you're installing it because it works. All right. So if you can give it eight CPUs, great. If you can only give it six, great. When I've tested it, at least for the purpose of studying for CCNA, four has been working out as enough. All right, so you can keep an eye down here. And I'm going to leave those on, and we're just going to go for it and start the lab. Watch the lower right, and we're going to see that populate from 0 to 4 CPUs and 0 to 4 gig of RAM allocated. There we go to 1 and 1, 2 and 2, 3 and 3. I predicted. There we go. <laughs> and 4 and 4. All right, so that matches up with what I was expecting from experience having used this. But if you did the math over here, like in memory usage, it says, hey, we're only actually using 1.32 gig right now. So it didn't go out there and start using all of that memory. Now, let's say we got into the consoles of all these devices and configured some features and more importantly, generated tons of traffic. You're going to see the actual usage of CPU and memory go up. All right. But for CCNA study, what do we do? We configure things. We do show commands to see that it's working. We seldom stress test the devices. So for, chances are that you can get away with um, not having to bump up your memory and give it a low number of CPUs and RAM to get away with running things. Now, focusing on that allocation down at the bottom right with four CPUs and four gig of RAM again, let me just take them one at a time and stop some nodes. Here, I'm going to stop one of the switches. It's going to go down to three CPUs and three gig of RAM. I'll stop the other switch. Likewise, it's going to go down one CPU and one gig. We'll stop a router, go down to one and one, stop the other one. It'll go down to zero CPUs and zero gig of RAM allocated. We see the actual used RAM and CPUs go down because we're not running those operating systems anymore. So that's something you'll see here and can monitor. So what you want to watch for is whatever you can afford to allocate from your computer to this VM. Do that. Bring up a lab. Try it. Keep an eye on it. So it may be that you can bring them up and then you bump into performance problems. How will you tell? Well, things might start running slowly. It takes a while to get a response from the device. That's when you go to the Cisco Learning Network. That's learningnetwork.cisco.com. Find the CML forum, ask people about it, see if they've had any experiences that can help you out there. But honestly, chances are CML free for CCNA study, you'll probably be able to get it to work on a lot of modern laptops and desktops without having to worry about it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for hanging until the end. I'd love to know how it went. So leave me a comment. Let me know how it worked, how much CPU and RAM it looks like things are using, and whether you got it to run on your computer without having to spend more money. All right. Thanks for hanging out. Of course, subscribe and click the bell if you haven't already. Thanks for hanging out. We'll talk to you soon.